Hello and welcome. Welcome to today. Today is the 29th day of the 30 day sunrise yoga series for beginners. Unleashing the magic of yoga. I am Christine Marie and I am so proud of you because if you're watching this, you have maybe not consecutively, maybe not consistently, but you have built your journey all the way to day 29. We started building up the mountain to day 15. Then at 16, we started working our way down the mountain and integrating all of the skills we learned on the way up into series, into more sophisticated poses. And we also were able to apply things like mudras and different uh, facets of yoga, kundalini, um, different parts that we may, as beginners, not be so aware of. One of the most brilliant things about accepting that title of beginner is that we can stay beginners. And when you say beginners, things stay new. You stay in discovery and you can more easily embrace solutions rather than staying in routine and needing to live in the problem long enough that the pain creates the need for a solution. You have created, you have chosen a commitment Make sure that you recommit to it. And I want to touch on one thing that's happened to me. It happened to me twice. When things change and they transform very quickly, very much like a hangover we might get from drinking too much the night before, the hangover comes from the alcohol leaving our body very quickly and aggressively. Well, when we go through massive change, especially if it's emotional change or mental shift, the effect of it can often feel like sickness. Today, I've got the worst headache and I've got a stomach ache and I've had it since the beginning of yesterday. I also had a massive shift in my life take place. Um, and it wasn't even a shift that I that happened to me. It's just one that I had been doing this work on and boom, it, it was out. And suddenly I was not feeling well. That's totally normal. So be aware that that's going to happen. I wish I could have warned you earlier, but you stay at the course, you stuck in there, and now you're on day 29. So you probably already know what I'm talking about. Let's get right into it. Today is yen. Today is a yen day, and it's also Tuesday. And as I, you know, I'm bringing you through a tour of the days in English so that we might leverage the power that the day has in its name. Names are very important. People go through great lengths to change their name because of how they wish to be seen or because of a truth about themselves that they can no longer hide. Well, Tuesday is named for the Nordic god Tues, T-I-W. And he is dedicated to single combat justice fairness. And that is where we get Tuesday. So legal things, um, discussions, negotiations, I would definitely handle on a Tuesday because the forces of justice are in your favor. Hmm. Let's get into the yin, and before we do, of course, we're going to do the Fountain of Youth, but before that, we're going to ground. You know this. Let the eyes float closed. Let the body root through the root chakra. Let's bring the hands to prayer on your heart. Let's bring the hands to prayer on your root chakra or your sacral, can't really reach the root. Bring the hands to prayer on your sacral chakra. Inhale, bringing the breath to the sacral chakra. Belly expands, exhale, belly contracts. Bring your hands in prayer to the solar plexus. Inhale, 
Exhale. Sending that breath there. Bring your hands to prayer at the heart. Inhale. The heart expands. Exhale. The heart contracts. Bringing those prayer hands to your um, throat chakra. Inhale. Feeling the air moving through that space. Exhale. Bring your hands in prayer to third eye. Inhale. Sending the breath to third eye. Exhale. Bring your hands to crown chakra over your head. Inhale. Feeling that lilac energy expand. Exhale. Taking one more moment here to honor your showing up today, to honor that justice is not something that we can see right in front of our eyes. There are so many layers of justice. That's why it becomes easier to, for some of us to turn over our will in our life to higher power, inner guide, God, doorknob, whatever you believe in, because we may not know how just something we find incredibly unfair actually is. Let's get into it. Okay, we're going to begin, of course, with spinning, checking my radius, rooting through my two feet. Hmm. Eyes open, gaze towards the ground, chins parallel to the ground. Shoulders are rooted into the shoulder cuffs. And because they're rooted, our arms can expand and float open like wings. Let's begin. And one, two, three, four. Five. Bring everything together. Let the eyes close. Let the spin catch you. And let's go to camel. Rooting through all points of contact with the earth. Keeping a slight tension in your core to protect your lower back. The bend is going to go up and over, not splitting the back in half. Fingertips reach down towards the earth. Elbows, eyes at the elbows, face the short side of the mat. Make sure the head's in line, not uh, angled forward. Head's in line with the heart. And elbows are reaching towards each other. Here we go. Inhale. <sighs> Exhale. One. Inhale. Exhale. Two. Inhale. Exhale. Three. Inhale. Exhale. Four. Inhale. Exhale. Five. Moving now to J. Legs start up, supporting that middle back. I used to support it lower, but with that noise it kept making. Now I put my hands in the middle back. <laughs> okay, starting with the body up, pinning our core down towards the ground. Makes it a lot easier. And let's begin. Inhale. Exhale. One. Inhale. Exhale. Two. Inhale. Exhale. Three. Inhale. Exhale. Four. Inhale. Exhale. Five. Now, let's go to tabletop. 
making sure now we're using that protective grip for our hands, L, and the other fingers unfold from the L, palming the basketball, feeling the joints of the fingers pressing into the ground. Okay, hands wide enough for the seat to float through. Feet are a little bit less than hip width apart. Eyes of the elbow face the front short side of the mat. And elbows, of course, yearning to be towards each other. Shoulders pin towards the heart. Here we go. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Three. Inhale. Exhale. Four. Inhale. Exhale. Five. And wrapping up our five, our five Tibetan rituals, using that protective grip again. And after doing this for 29 days, you see how important it is that I spent forever and a day on the protective grip in the first day yoga snack. Here we go, eyes of the elbow facing the front short side of the mat, protective grip, and make sure to work at your level. I will um, work at a modified level today, actually. Yeah, okay. I'm going to work at the light level. Here we go. Inhale. Exhale. One. Inhale. Exhale. Two. Inhale. Exhale. Three. Inhale. Keeping a slight tension in that middle back. Exhale. Four. Inhale. Exhale. Five. And let's move right into our yin series. We're going to begin with Sphinx. So for Sphinx pose, we're going to start with our hands right where they were. We don't need the protective grip. It's yin, so we don't, we don't have that level of tension. Um, that We're not dealing with that level of tension where we need to protect our hands. But we will um, make sure that our elbows are aligned with each other and our hands are flat, resting on the ground. And we'll bring our body through. And we want to really find that bend, let me show you. We want to find the bend in the thoracic spine rather than the middle back. This is not an upward facing dog. This is not even a cobra. This is Sphinx, it's its own thing. So we will, so we have that bend. I think I can view it even a little bit further forward, yes. So the bend is happening right about here in that back. We're gonna hold this for two minutes and make sure in Sphinx, we can deceive ourselves and think that being all the way up is right where we need to be at the beginning. Again, let gravity do the work. So let the push down help you find that bend in the thoracic spine, in the upper back. I mean, the middle upper back, okay? Don't force it or else you'll have back pain. 30 seconds into our pose. We'll hold for two minutes. And as flexibility opens up, you can allow yourself to bend up a little bit more. It's always mystified me that Sphinx is a yin pose because I feel like I'm doing a lot of work. <laughs> uh, it's one of the few yin poses where resistance to gravity is um, what uh, is, is is part of it. It's this one and and lunge, Anjaneyasana. Those both require a lot of resistance to gravity, and yet they are classic yin poses. We finished our first minute. 
And now we are at our last 30 seconds. It's amazing how fast time flies. <laughs> Shoulders back, of course. But be gentle, this is the time. If ever there was a time to be gentle, it's yen. Let's now take the counter pose to Sphinx and take puppy pose. So for puppy pose, we're gonna move through tabletop and we're just going to bring our seat above, pushing it back, pushing our seat back towards our feet, but not child's pose, not bringing it all the way down. We're feeling this, we're leaving our hands in front where they were for Sphinx and we're feeling our um, we're feeling our, a stretch through that same place that we were just bending. For puppy pose, the hands stay forward. And you still want to think about the shoulders. You want them to motion towards um, the heart, but you're not pinning them as hard. It's okay for them to be a little bit, obviously, to be out of their sockets. And you're just letting that stretch happen. Eventually you can let the chin come to the ground and look forward if that's where you are. I am, I have my third eye on the ground. And you really wanna feel that stretch through that upper back, middle upper back. Mm. The more you ground your hands, the more easily you can feel that stretch. completed our first minute. And now let's thread the needle. So continuing with this work on our upper body and shoulders, we put our right hand underneath our head, reach up through the left side body, through the left fingertips, and thread that needle, reaching the hand through and under our right arm, and feeling that stretch in that left shoulder blade. The wings of our left shoulders are expanded. Our hand is resting lightly. It's just supporting where we are. Our body is also feeling this twist. Our seat is over our knees. Not necessarily perfectly straight. I mean, perfectly over, but over them. You can also take the right arm up and you can bring it around like you would for reverse warrior, that lower arm in reverse warrior. If you don't need the support of the right arm on the ground. That can feel really good sometimes. Hmm. We're in our last 30 seconds. Left ear is on the ground. Hmm. 
Mm, breathing, breathing, breathing. What a gift, breath. Reach up with your right arm if you had it on the ground, if you had it folded back, and reach through and unlace, unbraid your threading the needle, unthread your needle. Bring the left hand under your head, bring the right arm up, and thread the needle on the right side. Right arm comes through, bringing the body so that it's stretching that right shoulder blade, the wings of the right shoulder. And from here, you have your right ear on the ground, you have your seat over your knees, and you can actually reach the left hand forward if you'd like. That's a nice variation on the arm. Or if you took a twist on one side, you can try it on the other. Remember, both sides, I mean, each side is different, yes? Okay. Hmm. It's really hard to see the time. <laughs> ah, I should have turned around. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna turn this pose around. You stay where you are. And let's unthread this needle, lifting the left arm up and pressing into the ground, coming to tabletop. From here, we're going to take lizard pose. There's a much cuter name for lizard pose for yen when, it, when we do it in yen, but I'm not remembering it. I wanna say it's like maybe dragon, no something very interesting. For lizard pose, what you're going to do is we're going to start in tabletop. We're gonna bring our right foot forward and you're going to bring your right elbow underneath your um, right knee. And you can stay right there and that can be your lizard for today. You should already be feeling a nice stretch under this right hamstring, on um, this right hamstring. You walk your leg back and you can bring your body down. Now, if you like, you can support yourself in lizard. You can support this back knee. And you can support the front body with a pillow so that you bring the ground to yourself. Um, but wherever you are, let's hold this. You should be feeling this um, in your Right, and oh, we want to keep that knee at a 90 degree angle. Not, I had it, I had it like that. I had it um, kind of stretched back. So it was like 95, 96, maybe even 100. We want to keep it at 90 degrees. And we're feeling it in this open thigh back here. The left thigh is stretched. So we're stretching the hamstrings and the left thigh at the same time and using gravity to do it. Head can be down, head can be, gaze can be forward. And you'll ease slowly down towards the ground, stretching, 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 as you, um, as gravity opens up your body, but let gravity do it. It's no, there's no race here. We come to yin every four to five practices, every three to four yangs, stronger and more open. Eventually you will get it all the way down. 
the end of the morning? Probably not. <laughs> Probably won't get it all the way down at the end of the morning. <laughs> Hands are bound, in case you can't see me. Hands are bound. They're holding this pose together. <laughs> Final 20 seconds. Final 10. Okay. Let's unwrap the pose, bringing everything back to tabletop. That's our neutral. If you used your knee on one side, you might, a uh, cushion on your knee on one side, you might need it on the other side. Let's bring the hand, the foot, the left foot between the two hands. And remember, you can use a bolster to bring the ground closer to you when you're resting that hand. Well, I'll show you in a second. So we're going to first bring our left shoulder and place it under our left knee if we can. If you can't, then just bring it beside. You can bring it beside and place two hands beside the knee. And if you can, you're gonna tuck it under and bring the left forearm through and around. It's gonna make a little bind and you're going to bring hands together. And from there, you're gonna walk back that left. You're gonna keep this 90 degree angle. See that? Not there, not over, yeah? And then you're gonna walk back that right knee until you feel just a little bit of tension, just a little bit of a stretch happening because it's yin. So we're gonna be here a while. We don't wanna force the stretch in that right hip flexor. We want gravity to help us help it. No force. Heads down or um, looking forward. It's amazing how much more open one side is versus another. If you notice that one side's open more than another, think about how that relates with the masculine energy, masculine feminine energies. I think I prefer to say sun moon energies because I don't want anybody to feel um, unheard. Um, so I think I'm going to say instead of masculine feminine, I'm going to say sun for the right side and doing and action and moon for the left side and being and uh, feeling. Yes. So notice which side is more open, your sun side or your moon side? There's a bug flying in my face. Okay. And let's unfold in 10 seconds. I could literally hang out in this pose on this side all day long. Okay, two arms come up. I mean, two arms come down, pressing against the ground, tabletop. And now we are ready for that most amazing pose of yin. <laughs> I'm joking, Shavasana. We're going to Shavasana. So today I'm gonna take Shavasana on my with my with a bolster under my knees. It's gonna be nice. Lowering your body down. Hmm. Today we dug into places that don't usually get attention. Our thoracic spine, most of the time, most of us don't actually stretch it out. Um, when we're doing um, our twists, you know, these twists at the end of class. Uh, we don't keep our opposite shoulder on the ground. So a lot of times the thoracic spine doesn't get the stretching it needs. And then we've dug into our hip flexors. And usually when we're doing pigeon, 
we're stretching so many other things the hip flexors can get lost in the shuffle so it's that's one of the nice things about yin is you can really target places that deserve attention So now perfectly, oh no, we started at, yes, we did start perfectly, yes, at six. So it's perfectly 6.30. If your out is at exactly the 30 minute mark, you can go, this is the time. If you can hang out here for about two more minutes, grounding our practice for today, then please do. Actually, just one more minute. Okay, Ooh, wiggle the toes, wiggle the fingers, wiggle the wrists, wiggle the ankles, the legs, the arms, wiggle, 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 and bring everything to the right side, and push yourself up for our closing of today, today, day 29. Hmm. Sometimes when we finish yoga, a glow shines around us and some people see it and some people don't. And it's interesting that you don't know when you're going to see it because it doesn't come down to how hard you worked. It comes down to how present you were with the poses. I wonder if you guys are glowing right now. Thank you for joining me on day 29 on this lovely Tuesday. Releasing the need for justice to be something that we must enact upon others. And letting, just as we did with our yin practice today, letting an outside force partner with us to make a change Let's see what happens when we do that in our lives off of the mat. I wish you joy, ease, space, and grace. Satnam, namaste.